Bad word enough. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Spin Rack on Hill. My boy PD. Yo, what's up, PD? Say what's up. Yo, what up? Today we talking about Ghostbusters Afterlife. We watched this film, the whole film in Comic Con. It was a big surprise, right, PD? Right, we totally didn't expect yeah. it. We, we there were not many surprises at Comic Con, and that was the big one. Oh my goodness, it was huge! All the people in the room, no one expected to do it. But hey, we're here for the review. They told us the PD telling me the the embargo has lifted, right? Yep, they said people can um, talk about it. Yeah. Talk about it, we will. All I gotta say, hey, it, it was a blast. PD, can you hit him off with the premise, and we'll just jump straight into it. The premise is we meet a family that we know nothing about. They're just on hard times and they have to leave their home. It's a mother and her two children, a son and a younger daughter who's a, so, somewhat of a brainiac. And they leave town and they go to their grandfather's house. But we see a scene that leads to some ghostly type stuff, ghostly type stuff right before that in this house. So they go to that very house that has the ghostly thing happening. And when they get there, the hints of the ghost is found out by the youngest kid, the daughter, right? So that's, that story unfolds. The town itself continually shows some sort of thing about ghosts throughout. They keep the kids in town, go to these mountains and the mountains, you can see the, in the mine, sh the shaft there, there's some ghostly stuff happening and all this stuff. But then as they go along in the house, the daughter finds all the stuff that we know are callbacks to our movie, Ghostbusters. Yeah, baby! And that wouldn't be the, that wouldn't be all. There would be a lot of callbacks to the original movie throughout this uh, movie. So this is basically a feel good, fun thing. If you like, um, what is it? Um, you like Stranger Things. You like that, what's the, what's the, was it It? Is it like they all? What? It was too scary, bro. No, not talking about as scary as that, but having the young characters interacting with these ghosts type of deal, you, having that, Look. having <laughs> that sort of stuff is is in that vein. So you're getting the younger crowd now. For me, at the same time, I'm kind of questionable about going that young because it was the original Ghostbusters. Since this is a review, the original Ghostbusters are. Basically, they're, they're real life what scientists would be. They would be basically nobodies. They might be like Spangler and, um, you know, and, um, and Dan Aykroyd's character. They kind of would be the guys that are lifelong scientists that don't really make anything the, that with any worth of life. They probably made stuff for other companies that made, made it big, but that would be the true work for hire. They would be working within a company, getting benefits, and everything going to the company. And then you have Bankman who's kind of out of the side. So they really had something where these guys were career scientists and then they found a way to do something outside of the business and become big, right? So they, it was that sort of thing made a lot of sense to how they got, you know, they figured something out that basically made them to be like famous and made them money. So these kids, they connect, you know, connect and we connect to one of the Ghostbusters. Should we say it? Should we say anything like that? I'll let them go into it. You asking me? I'm asking you. What do you oh, think? Okay. I, you think we should sure. hold on that? Oh, well, basically, we, sorry. So I we, think we, I think we, we should just say straight up. I said that one of the Ghostbusters is who they were related to in the building. Okay. So, yeah, one of the oh, Ghostbusters is oh, related to, and it's going to, sorry. Well, one thing I wanted to break out is that, you know, yeah, there's some, in terms of this movie, in terms of the comparison I make, I guess I go back a little further. I, this is a type of fun, enjoyable movie that comes along with like the Goonies, the type of movie that was yeah. with um, Back to the Future. You know, there's or Stranger Things. If you like Stranger Things, it's in that vein. That's not going too far back. You like Stranger? Oh, that's too scary. Sorry. No, look, I'm not. Into, I'm not into scary stuff. I'm not scared. It's just I choose not to be scared. There's a okay. All right? Don't don't go there, bro. Don't go there. All right. So yeah, I, I think it's highly enjoyable. So this family, like. Like um, PD saying, it's from the, the Spanglers. And I'll let PD continue with that. I one. didn't say that. I said one of the Ghostbusters. But since that's uh, the cat's out of the bag, um, so basically, as they go, you know, they get this new. It's, we think it's gonna be, we think it's gonna be the ghost that we remember. But it's now one called Muncher, right? <laughs> so we've seen we, it 
Did we see him? Yeah, in the, in the movies, the other movies. So I'm not sure. No, that's was that was um Slimer. Is it Slimer? Yeah, Slimer. So um, maybe you know I think because what name was eating all the time too. So when you um when you when you go to this, it's just sort of slowly you know they they. As you're saying, you were going and as we were going through this. So you know, ultimately, it's a very fun movie. There's a lot of callbacks, um, and then so a couple more surprises as you go through it. But that's one of the things, though, that you're saying the callbacks that's so fantastic about the film is that one you have, like you said, for little bit little kitties, you know, they'll just enjoy the the, the fun, the, the the destruction, and and mm-hmm. the happening because these characters are so much younger. They're not scientists like, they're not all the characters. The the granddaughter of. Um, of uh, Spangler, what's her name again? Uh, the, the granddaughter of Spangler. She is a scientist, so you know she's a scientist in training. She's really smart. She's, uh, you know, she knows what. I think her name is. Uh, uh, well, just keep going. Just keep going. Uh, Phoebe. I think her name is Phoebe, right? And so, she is like the lead character in all this, basically, because she's the one who is, um, who, who discovers a lot of the stuff. The science about her grandfather who he was because they didn't know anything about him and there's a whole history between the mother and the father because he was so um into handling this stuff he kind of alienated a lot of people and so this is why he came out all the way to himself in some boondock town out in what was it montana oklahoma i think it was and he was like i gotta stay here why because in this town there's something that's happening and it's an interesting connection this is what i'm saying you know, for the kids, there's a lot of fun there, but there's also a lot of, like like PD was saying, there's a whole bunch of um, Easter eggs or connections with the older movies. So for older fans who've watched it before, you get all these connections, you're like, oh, wow, this is great. This is from the original movie. I got to check out the old Ghostbusters, you know? So this is why um, I think it was, uh, it, it, it definitely hits a lot of notes. If you're thinking this is going to be like a like a, a, a Oscar winning movie, that's what the first ones weren't, and this is not going to be. But in terms the of- The first one should have been. But in terms of pure, pure enjoyment, in terms of pure fun, love, and, and the connection, this is the movie for it. I think you're gonna, this is, unfortunately, it should have been a summer movie, but they're making it, I think it's coming out when? In November, November 19th, so it's gonna be around the uh, Thanksgiving time period. So it may do well, you know, with families and, and kids. It's definitely something they can watch, but man, they're going up against the Eternals, wow. Well, I mean, the thing is that it's been out for, they, they think they've been sitting on it for a while, so that's one of the things that they were kind of, um, struggling with probably why they definitely released it beforehand but you know we we we're hoping i mean this is working the same way star wars did where they're introducing all these new younger characters we got phoebe we got trevor you know who else we got was it um podcast what's the kid podcast podcast is fantastic all it, and it was the girl's name the girl's name lucky but it's like one of those things where you got all these new cast of characters you might be seeing some of the older characters and it'll just be a legacy sort of thing, a legacy sort of done right. The understanding what a what a um, what a sequel or a legacy film is supposed to be, and what's supposed to keep you in there for these things. And these characters can grow into this, and but they only have what is it? Um, I guess it's sort of like two scientists, because the, the the black girl she's a, she's she's kind of hiding that she's smart. I only wish that the mother. Well, since she's the daughter of one of the Ghostbusters, also had the uh, yeah yeah <laughs> yeah. So, um, but that's uh, interesting. I'll just I'll just do a um, for me. I saw this movie going to the original Ghostbusters since I um, you know I visit my mom on the weekends. We hadn't done a lot of movies since we lived in Queens as a family. But we did it with we did all those the blockbuster movies like. Um, What's blockbuster? No, block. You know what a blockbuster movie when everything is like sells out in the millions. That's where the name blockbuster came from. Going to the theater and it'd be a blockbuster. It, the whole block around the block, the blockbuster movie. Since I had to explain to you, <laughs> well, but you know, like we watched the uh, history of the world, obviously airplane. Um, all those things that were pretty big at the time. Obviously, Star Wars, that sort of thing. We went to the like, movies to see Airplane instead of watching on TV like everybody else? We went to my family. When I okay. lived with my mother, we all went. And then when I was living with my father and we visited my mother on the weekends, it was a rare time when we go to the movies. 
one of the movies we went to when my mother post that period in the 80s was Ghostbusters. Since my mother was a fan, mother and stepfather were fans of, obviously, Saturday Night Live, they had enough of the cast of Saturday Night Live to say, hey, let's see what this is about. You know, and it was, and if you think about it, that's an old style movie because the arc of the movie is them, you know, them in these weird places searching this thing, them deciding to go and do this ghost thing, then them becoming big, huge stars with it, then the city comes and tries to have someone to try to take them down, then they take them down, the city goes to pot, they get thrown in jail. And it's like, there's so much plot to it. That's the one thing that you miss going into this. It's like, um, can you make a movie like that where you have that much, like a Dan Aykroyd, because it was that Dan Aykroyd and Hal Ramis kind of came in and put that together, but it was a Dan Aykroyd original sort of thing. And it's something that he probably would have done with John Landis had John Landis not, you know, gotten in trouble. But then the next thing you know is with Ivan Reitman, which has gone to this long legacy of having them even, you know, the one with the women. So it's like they had all these movies, all these TV shows, and then now we have a new generation of Ghostbusters, which people have been asking about because it's always a big thing at the cons. So yeah, you always see people at the cons who have the... Uh, yeah, yeah. Office, they have the, the trucks and stuff, the Echo. So you'll yeah. always have, you, you'll always have, you, you know, there's always been interest in that, and they'll have a new thing. And... Um, Basically, you know, this seems like they can get to the Indiana Jones part of this sort of thing, sort of bring into a next sort of genre. Because, you know, this, as they say, and it's not, it's something we knew in comic books, which was genre mixing. But at the same time, this one was the first time they kind of, Hollywood really saw it. They understood having comedy and action and having little, you know, like that sort of thing. But having two genres, having the like the horror and this sort of thing, like kind of mixed with the comedy. Action movie with comedy was kind of big for um for uh, movies and it hasn't been broken since then. So yeah, it's um let's see how they go and maybe they can get to some, you know, really traveling since this is in a totally different area, they can get out of New York City and not have to blow up to New York City all the time. They can go into like an Indiana Jones thing and kind of do what Wait, 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 Pete. Did we not see the end? What, what part of the end? Yeah, so at the end, the, at the end credits, and I suggest you all watch it at the very end, there's something that tells you where they're going to be going. So I don't know what you're saying there, my friend. I'm saying that, I'm yeah, saying but you can keep, like, the fact that they did it in a different area, they should explore more areas. They can get to the Indiana Jones where they're traveling. They do the the map, you know, in Indiana Jones, the, the map, and then no, they but travel. I'm just trying to just say the end credits had something there, right? So All right. I, I, don't, I don't know if I should say it or we should just let it go. You already said everything. You might as well keep going. I didn't say everything. All I'm just saying is that it looks as though there may be some difference. So one thing really said the Egon is in it, right? It's a connection with Egon, right? Right. right. But, I mean, there, there's... There's a cameos. There are cameos in this left and right. So if you're a big fan, definitely go check it out. You can't, you can't miss it. And um, it's interesting how things have changed throughout the years. But uh, you know, Dan Aykroyd is funny as hell. I just gotta say, Bill Murray is crazy. Uh, was I supposed to say that? Yeah. Why wouldn't you? He's, okay. Uh, yeah, you already said you said that Dan Aykroyd is crazy. Winston is there. You know, it's the, all I gotta say. It's the whole shebang is off. Um, they are. I thought they rushed certain things. I thought the movie seemed to cut a little. They cut out some 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 scenes, some some important like you know, like you know when you do a, a karate film, you always have to. You are saying it looked like it was still like it was it was it was close, but then they they need to they might need to either loosen like a little bit more them. training. You know, like you don't become a, a Ghostbusters overnight, but you know then again. Who's there to train them? I agree with you, but at the same time, this movie hasn't doesn't have room to do but the bro, training. You just said they are scientists. The original crew was scientists. Here, these guys aren't really scientists. So yeah, they would understand how to utilize some of the equipment. These guys did not. So that's my only criticism of it is that you no, know, that's a like big thing. Them. I'm not saying I'm not saying you're wrong. It's like when you're watching um, 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 the Karate Kid and stuff like that. You got to go through the training period. People don't like the training. They don't the like training it. is the essence. They want to complain about it. 
you know, you can't. You're right, but I'm saying that you're totally right. But that's the thing. Audiences decide. Hey, we like audiences. We don't dis audiences. Okay. No, no. Do. I'm saying that if everyone sit around and complain about the Karate Kid, the only thing that that Mr. Miyagi taught him was was mainly defense, right? So that's why he could do he could defect defend against points. He could defend against points, and then he could get a point because at the end. Miyagi taught him how to punch, so he can defend mostly and punch. So that's the conceit. And we know in a karate tournament, that would be the best place for him to win, not in a regular karate fight. When we see, oh, it's a tournament. It's basically you go in that, and it's like it's not going to be like a real fight like those kids. And they showed you that the kids could do all these crazy jumps and that, and if they were to tackle them, it would be way different. But that's the conceit. But people still complain about the Karate Kid. Oh, if you just had a mon montage, you're going to just learn karate? No, the montage is of months and months of months of training. You know, maybe it's even years. <laughs> Who knows? But it's like, that's what the montage will be. People forgot with the, just so they could take trash the the Karate Kid. So then you have this. That ultimately always happens in the movie and, and what's the name. If you skip over it and you say, let's take that training thing out. And the audience says, yeah, cheer, just cheering without even noticing it, not even caring. Not even caring that if the outfits fit these kids. They're just like, hey. No, I know. I mean, the outfit, <laughs> bam, put it on. Nobody like cutting, like, yo, we're going to make it our own. Nothing. They, they, they all, the Miss Silly from um, the, the color purple outfits, that one size fits all. Don't you remember at the end she made her own pants? Said I'm wearing the same pants as um as well as Oprah's characters. The Harper was wearing the same pants as as um Sophia. Don't you remember that at the end? Come on, get these get this. All right, so we let's close this out. Let's close it out. So overall, I say it's a it's a it's a hit. I think you should watch it. I think you know it's difficult to to tell what audiences are going to say here. Then especially this is going to come out during a very 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 busy holiday season. And I think a lot of other movies are going to be there. It's not going to have a lot of time to stand on its own, you know, because you're going to have Eternals, you're going to have Spider-Man. You may have, um, I mean, there's a lot of other movies that are coming out that are, that are dropping too. So it's going to be, uh, it's going to be a tough place to find. But what I want to say, two things. One is that Saturday Night Live, their, um, their, their, their alumni are amazing. I mean, you have all these guys coming from Saturday Night Live, you know, doing these shows. The comedy, you know, they, they learned there is incredible. One big shout out is to, um, to well, they were Ted Lasso, you know, who's also another Saturday Night Live alum, you know, did a good job there. And it's just what are you talking comedy. about? I'm just throwing that in, bro. Why would you throw that in there? Well, just to say, this, it just, I'm just saying. Why would you say that? This has nothing to do with this. I'm just trying to say the Saturday Night, like, Saturday Night Live alum, Dan Aykroyd, um, um, Bill Murray was there several times. The fact that these guys showed up so much and did such a good job, you know, it's just amazing. They, they constantly find great talent. That they did it for Ghostbusters, and you also have like a recent Saturday Night Live love who's done very well, you know, Sudeikis and uh, Ted Lasso. That's all I was saying, bro. None, none, none to that's the right. Well, this, what's the name? Like the Saturday Night Live, the original two, they were from a group. They were from a group before. Saturday it was just a comic. It wasn't like to, to, I'm just to saying they came. They, it wasn't Saturday Night Live that made them. What they were already a group that were doing things, and then they put that group on television. Since they were, you know, ragtag group, that's why they went with the name. You know, the not ready for prime time really, players, but you know, they they were doing their thing. But, and, but one thing, are, are they alumni of Saturday Night Live? <laughs> Saturday Night Live didn't make this. Yes, they Night Live, made they Saturday Night Live. Are they alumni from Saturday Night Live? Yes or no? Made it. Are they set alumni from Saturday Night Live? Simple question. Oh, yes, they God. are. That's all I got to say. Gee, you wish, bro. I do a review on the guy who wants to train. train you so I say go out and watch it. You're going to have a blast. Take the little kitties if you want, You know, which I think they're going to love. You're going to enjoy it on a, on, a, on a Easter egg and, 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 and just reminiscing and the kids are going to love it because it's going to be fun and exciting okay some people may be scared so I'll, I'll give you that warning there well since you already said it um i've had to mention um thank you i said that's what i said lord i was going to say something but you say it say it. I'm like, I'm it 
when when I was in high school, when I was in high school, a friend of mine called me and my friends, the, uh, my other, well, well, and my brother and my other two friends. My friend called my brother and my other friend us the Ghostbusters, and regretfully he used to call me Egon, and I was like, why do you keep calling me Egon? It's like I'm not, you know, like everybody wants to be Bankman, that sort of thing. But he kept calling me Egon. He didn't name any of the other guys in the group, but he kept calling me Egon. And I was like, I'm not even that smart. But he, I guess he was trying to reference that I was socially awkward. So um, that this thing kind of touched me just because it was we had Spangler's character there in spirit since we know um, how Ramus has passed. So. Literally. So there it is. Spinarak? Out.